Hello, I'm Herb Bunk, and I'm at Green Bay, Wisconsin at Lambeau Field, which is the home of the world champion Green Bay Packers. And today I'm talking to you about money. The United States $100 bill is the most used and the most counterfeited currency in the entire world. With a $100 bill, you could fill up the gas tank of your pickup truck or SUV, or you could buy a few days worth of food for you and your family. This bundle is $10,000, and it's made up of a stack of 100 $100 bills. It's approximately one half inch thick. Two bundles of $10,000 like this will buy you a pretty decent car. The number one million is written as a one followed by six zeros. One million dollars in $100 bills has a volume of approximately one half cubic foot and weighs 22 pounds. We are familiar with the concept of a million dollars because a million dollars or a multiple of a million dollars is often the prize in our state lottery drawings. The United States government spends more than seven million dollars per minute, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And of that money, they borrow three million dollars per minute. It's no longer unusual for a state lottery prize to grow to an amount in excess of a hundred million dollars. A hundred million dollars weighs 2,200 pounds and it'll fit neatly into the back of my pickup truck. However, it will slightly overload the springs of that pickup truck. As they run our country, our government spends more than $430 million an hour, and of that money, $170 million per hour is borrowed and added to our deficit. This is $1 billion. A billion is written as a one followed by nine zeros. A billion dollars weighs approximately 11 tons. This semi-truck, which has a maximum load limit of 46,000 pounds, can haul slightly more than $2 billion in a single load. Our government spends more than $10 billion a day, and of that money, they borrow $4 billion a day, of which $1 billion a day goes to pay interest on the deficit. A billion dollars is the amount that President Obama and his supporters expect to have available to spend on the president's re-election campaign between now and November 2012. Bill Gates and Warren Buffett are the two richest men in America. The value of their assets at any time depends on the stock market, the value of the dollar, and any number of other intangibles. On the day that this video was made, Gates' assets were $56 billion and Buffett's were $50 billion. I've hauled all of their money in $100 bills into Lambeau Field, and right now I'm standing on top of Warren Buffett's money pile. Buffett frequently complains that he is not taxed as much as he thinks he should be. Apparently, he's not aware that, ta that the tax code specifies the minimum acceptable amount of taxes that must be paid, and he actually could pay more than required and the IRS and the country would gratefully accept whatever extra he'd be willing to pay them. Assume for a minute that Gates and Buffett decide to pay all of their assets as taxes, all $106 billion to the government. This amount would sustain the government and pay all of the country's bills for less than 11 days. This is $1 trillion. One trillion is written as a one followed by 12 zeros. I am standing on a football field sized pile of $100 bills that extends from the five yard line at one end of the field to the five yard line at the other end of the field and it's stacked more than 10 feet high. This money weighs 11,000 tons. It took me more than 478 semi truck loads to haul it into Lambeau Field. To understand just how much spending power this money represents, assume you could live forever and that you had a trillion dollars to spend, and you started spending one million dollars per day, every day, starting with the day that Christ was born, and continued spending one million dollars a day. As of today, you would not have spent one trillion dollars. In fact, you could continue to spend one million dollars per day for the next 725 years before you'd run out of money. Our government is much more efficient than that. They spend $1 trillion every 96 days, and during that time, they borrow $400 billion 
which is added to the deficit. This is $3,800,000,000,000, which is the amount that our government will spend this year. It's the same football field-sized pile of $100 bills, and now it's stacked almost 40 feet high. It weighs 41,800 tons, and it took me more than 1,817 semi-truck loads to haul this money into Lambeau Field. Congress and President Obama have been unable to formulate a budget in the more than two and a half years since Obama was sworn into office. But that's not stopped nor even slowed down their spending. Of the year's expenditures, we have $2,400,000,000,000 available through taxes and other revenue, and we will borrow this year $1,400,000,000 and add that to the deficit. Looking at this pile of money, the amount that we'll have to borrow is the portion of the pile that extends from the far five-yard line out to the 41-yard line. There have been various proposals to cut spending and thereby reduce the deficit. Among those, our president has a plan to cut spending by $4 trillion over the next 12 years, which might work if we kept him in office for the next 12 years and forced him to keep his promises. But because he won't be around for that long, what it is or what it amounts to is he's just passing the problem on to his successor. The most we can expect in real cuts in government spending this year is approximately $50 billion, which would lower the height of this 40-foot high pile of money by less than six inches. I'm standing on top of our country's national debt, or what we also refer to as our budget deficit. This football field-sized pile of $100 bills is now stacked higher than a 15-story building. A recent debate in Congress over raising the debt limit, as they termed it, actually dealt with raising this pile of money an additional 20 feet, so in the future it can be as high as a 17-story building. The $14,600,000,000 here weighs 160,600 tons, and it took me more than 6,900 semi-truck loads to haul all of this money into Lambeau. This pile of money weighs three times as much as RMS Titanic weighed, and it's at least as large as the iceberg that sank the Titanic in 1912. The president has said repeatedly that greedy millionaires, billionaires, hedge fund managers, and the owners of corporate jets are the reason that the debt continues to grow. If those people paid more taxes, says the president, we could live within our means and eliminate the deficit. Air Force One here is the ultimate corporate jet, and we, the American people, own it. As the owners of this corporate jet, we are not the problem. This deficit is the result of a government out of control, unable and unwilling to rein in their spending. To immediately eliminate the deficit, every citizen, man, woman, and child could pay their share of the national debt, which is $47,000. So go ahead and write a check and send in your 47000 to the IRS. Or we could come up with a plan for gradually eliminating the deficit over a period of years by reducing spending to the amount that we actually have available. With our spending left unchecked, this pile of debt will grow more than four feet higher by the end of this year. And unless we stop the deficit from growing larger immediately, it will grow until just like the iceberg that sank the Titanic, this iceberg-sized deficit will become large enough to sink this country. We must all do our part and share the sacrifice. My wife and I are each going to write a check for $47,000 and mail them to the IRS. Thank you for your time and patience, and may God bless America.